Huge. Hogan's Heroes Secrets Finally Revealed Fans Are Speechless. Hogan's Heroes, a beloved TV series that aired from 1965 to 1971, skillfully mixed the setting of World War II with humorous storytelling. It followed a group of Allied prisoners held in a German POW camp who consistently outsmarted their captors. Led by the charming Colonel Hogan, the show became a lasting favorite with audiences, seamlessly blending moments of comedy and tension. However, beyond the familiar plots and character dynamics, there's a wealth of interesting facts and lesser-known details that add depth to the series. Whether you're a devoted fan or just discovering the show, these insights provide an intriguing glimpse behind the scenes. Reality Turned Fiction In an interesting twist of irony, Hogan's Heroes featured actors of Jewish heritage portraying some of the German officers, adding a layer of complexity to the casting. Notably, Werner Klemperer, who brought to life the character of the incompetent Colonel Klink, was of Jewish descent. Born into a distinguished Jewish family in Cologne, Germany, Klemperer, along with his family, fled the horrors of the Nazi regime during the 1930s, finding refuge in the United States. This personal history of Klemperer infused his portrayal of Colonel Klink with an added layer of significance. He often remarked that his decision to accept the role was contingent upon a crucial assurance. The show would consistently depict the Nazis negatively, ensuring they were never shown in a sympathetic or positive light. This condition was important to Klemperer, given his family's background and the historical context of the era the show parodied. Stalag 13 The setting of Hogan's Heroes, known as Stalag 13, is a fictional creation. Despite its imaginary status, the concept of Stalags is rooted in historical fact. During World War II, Stalag was an abbreviation for Stammlager, referring to German prisoner of war camps, primarily designated for captured non-commissioned officers and other enlisted personnel. While the series Stalag 13 did not exist in reality, the naming convention it followed was authentic, reflecting the actual numbering system used for such camps during the war. This fictional framework of Stalag 13 provided the creators with the freedom to craft a unique and engaging narrative. By choosing a non-existent Stalag, the show was able to blend comedy with the wartime setting in a manner that was both entertaining and, occasionally, enlightening. This approach allowed for a depiction of life in a POW camp that was not bound by the constraints of historical accuracy, enabling the series to explore themes of camaraderie, resilience, and the absurdities of war through a humorous lens. The Unseen Cigar Colonel Klink, a key character in the series, was often depicted with two notable accessories that became his trademarks, a monocle and a cigar. Interestingly, despite frequently being seen with the cigar, viewers never actually witnessed him lighting or smoking it. This recurring detail of the unlit cigar subtly contributed to the comedic aspects of his character. There are several ways to interpret this peculiar characteristic. It might be seen as a humorous indication of Klink's lack of follow-through, reflecting his inability to complete tasks or make decisive actions. Alternatively, it could suggest his perpetual state of distraction, unable to focus on the task at hand, including the simple act of lighting a cigar. On a lighter note, this detail could also be viewed as a quirky trait intended to enhance his memorability among the cast of characters. Regardless of the interpretation, the unlit cigar became an emblematic feature of Colonel Klink, adding a layer of humor and depth to his on-screen persona. Schultz's Catchphrase Sergeant Schultz, memorably portrayed by John Banner, left a lasting impression on audiences with his iconic catchphrase, This line, which has become almost synonymous with Schultz's character, was not part of the original script. Instead, 
It emerged spontaneously during the filming of an episode, when Banner ad-libbed the phrase. It perfectly captured the essence of his character, a German guard who habitually overlooked the prisoner's escapades. This improvisation quickly became a defining trait of Schultz, encapsulating his comedic reluctance to recognize the mischief occurring around him. The phrase not only added depth to his character, but also highlighted Banner's skill in bringing a unique blend of humor and warmth to the role, making Schultz's deliberate ignorance both humorous and somehow endearing. French Influence Robert Clary's portrayal of Corporal Louis Lebeau in Hogan's Heroes carries with it a depth and authenticity born from his own life story. Born in France, Clary is not just an actor, but a Holocaust survivor, having lived through the terrifying ordeal of the Buchenwald concentration camp during World War II. This personal connection to the very era the show comically represents lends his role an extraordinary layer of significance. Marked by a serial number tattooed on his arm, a grim souvenir from his time in Buchenwald, Clary's presence on the show brought a genuine sense of history to the comedy. This permanent mark is a powerful reminder of the unimaginable suffering endured by him and millions of others. Clary's involvement in Hogan's Heroes introduced a profound level of authenticity and depth to the series, creating a poignant juxtaposition between his real-world experiences and the sitcom's light-hearted take on a wartime setting. This stark contrast between Clary's personal history and the show's comedic approach not only highlighted the versatility and resilience of the human spirit, but also enriched the show's narrative, adding layers of meaning to his character's comedic exploits. Mistakes on Purpose Upon closer inspection, some viewers of Hogan's Heroes might notice what appear to be several anachronisms within the show, especially concerning the technology depicted. The series, ostensibly set in the 1940s during World War II, sometimes showcases equipment and gadgets that were not developed until the 1950s or 1960s. However, far from being oversights, many of these historical inaccuracies were intentionally included by the show's creators. These deliberate anachronisms served a specific comedic function, allowing the writers and producers to playfully engage with historical authenticity while keeping the overall tone of the series light and entertaining. By weaving these inaccuracies into the fabric of the show, Hogan's Heroes reminded its audience that, at its heart, it was a comedy first and foremost. The intention was not to provide a meticulously accurate historical account, but to entertain and amuse, using the World War II setting as a backdrop for its humorous narrative. This approach helped to create a unique and enduring charm, encouraging viewers to embrace the comedic aspects of the show without getting caught up in the historical details. Actor Backgrounds In Hogan's Heroes, the portrayal of military life and characters gained an extra layer of authenticity thanks to the real-life military backgrounds of several leading actors. Bob Crane, known for his role as the cunning Colonel Hogan, and Richard Dawson, who brought to life the character of Peter Newkirk, both brought their own military experiences to their performances. This personal familiarity with military discipline and the nuances of service life undoubtedly informed their portrayals, infusing their characters with a realism that complemented the show's comedic tone. This blending of genuine military insight with the series' humorous approach highlights the cast's ability to draw upon their personal histories to enrich their roles. The fact that actors with actual military experience were part of a show set in a World War II POW camp contributed to the believability of the characters and scenarios, despite the overarching comedic premise. It underscores the depth and versatility of the talent within the cast, capable of leveraging their real-world experiences to enhance the storytelling, even within the framework of a comedy. Hidden Reference in several episodes of Hogan's Heroes, 
There's a charming detail in the form of a wooden sign that lists various cities along with their distances from the camp. Among these cities is Hamelin, a clear reference to the well-known folktale of the Pied Piper of Hamelin. This Easter egg serves as a delightful nod for keen-eyed fans, illustrating the show's penchant for weaving in subtle allusions to broader European culture and history. The inclusion of Hamelin and similar references throughout the series enriches the narrative, grounding the fictional Stalag 13 within a more extensive, recognizable world. It adds depth to the camp's setting, bridging the gap between the show's comedic escapades and real-world geography and folklore. These thoughtful details contribute to the show's enduring charm, offering layers of meaning and context that reward attentive viewers and enhance the overall viewing experience. Hogan's Full Name To most viewers of Hogan's Heroes, the show's lead character is simply known as Colonel Hogan. However, his full name is revealed to be Robert Edward Hogan. Throughout the series, characters typically refer to him by his last name or rank, which aligns with common military customs and etiquette. This method of address serves a twofold purpose. Firstly, it underscores the show's setting within a military framework, reminding viewers of the hierarchical and formal nature of their interactions. Secondly, it fosters a sense of unity and closeness among the characters, reflecting the bonds formed in the crucible of their shared circumstances. By sprinkling the narrative with personal details like Hogan's full name, the series adds layers of depth and nuance to its characters, making them more relatable and engaging to the audience. This strategic revelation of personal background information invites viewers to form a deeper bond with the characters, enhancing the overall experience and immersion in the story. It's a subtle but effective way of enriching character development, allowing fans to feel a stronger connection to the characters and the world they inhabit. A loving nickname. James Kinchlow, commonly known as Kinch, and played by Ivan Dixon, shared a unique and respectful relationship with Colonel Hogan, often addressing him with the affectionate nickname Skipper. This choice of nickname serves as a testament to the depth of their bond, hinting at a connection that transcends simple friendship or military camaraderie to resemble something more akin to a familial relationship. Within the challenging environment of a POW camp, where trust was invaluable, the use of personal nicknames among the characters was a subtle but potent way to highlight the tight-knit nature and unwavering trust within the core group. It underscored the characters' reliance on one another, not just for survival but for the emotional support necessary to endure their captivity. The nickname Skipper not only reflected Kinch's respect for Hogan's leadership, but also underscored the solidarity and affection that characterized their interactions contributing to the show's portrayal of unity and resilience. Musical Talents Bob Crane, renowned for his portrayal of Colonel Hogan, possessed talents that reached well beyond his acting abilities. Before his rise to television fame, Crane was a skilled drummer, a passion and skill he developed long before stepping onto the Hogan's Heroist set. The show, keen to capitalize on Craney's musical talents, found opportunities to showcase his drumming in several episodes, weaving his real-life skills into the fabric of his character's storyline. These instances where Crane's drumming was featured became special highlights for fans, blurring the lines between the actor and his on-screen persona and adding an extra dimension of entertainment to the series. By allowing Crane to demonstrate his drumming abilities, Hogan's heroes not only paid homage to his talents, but also enriched the character of Coronel Hogan, making him more multifaceted and relatable. These moments of musical flair provided audiences with a delightful glimpse into the actor's personal interests and abilities, further endearing Crane and his character to the show's fans. Double Role Bernard Fox demonstrated remarkable acting versatility in Hogan's Heroes by successfully portraying two distinct characters, the bumbling Colonel Crittenden and the character Captain Rodney. 
This dual role performance is a testament to Fox's skillful acting, as he was able to convincingly differentiate between the two roles, ensuring that audiences recognized them as unique individuals despite being played by the same actor. This casting decision could have been motivated by budgetary considerations, or perhaps as a clever wink to the audience. But regardless of the reason, it underscored the adaptability and talent within the show's cast. By navigating these two roles with distinct characteristics and mannerisms, Fox contributed to the series' dynamic and engaging storytelling, showcasing his ability to inhabit diverse characters within the same television universe. This flexibility not only highlighted Fox's range as an actor, but also added an interesting layer to the show's overall entertainment value. Singer on set Before Richard Dawson became known for his role as Peter Newkirk on Hogan's Heroes, and long before he rose to fame as the host of Family Feud, he enjoyed a successful career as a singer in the UK. Dawson's smooth vocal abilities and charismatic stage presence established him as a distinguished figure within the British music scene. Although Hogan's Heroes was mainly focused on comedy, the varied backgrounds and talents of its cast members, including Dawson's singing talent, brought additional depth and richness to the show. These varied talents underscored the complexity and multifaceted skills of the actors, offering fans a reminder of the broad range of abilities possessed by their favorite performers, beyond their roles on the screen. Dawson's musical career, in particular, highlighted the diverse array of talents that contributed to making Hogan's Heroes a memorable and beloved series. Clink's Hat Colonel Clink's hat stands out as a fascinating choice in the wardrobe of Hogan's heroes. Set against the backdrop of World War II, the style of hat that Clink frequently sports is more closely associated with those worn by German military officers in World War I. This anachronistic wardrobe decision might have been deliberate, aimed at highlighting Clink's ineptitude and disconnect from reality. By mixing elements from different historical periods, the show injected an additional layer of humor, providing history enthusiasts with the opportunity to spot these amusing incongruities. This subtle blending of timelines not only adds to the comedic elements of the series, but also serves as a nod to Clink's character, further underscoring his bumbling persona through his distinctive, yet historically misplaced, choice of headgear. Same set. Due to the budget constraints and the logistical challenges inherent in television production during the 1960s, Hogan's Heroes exemplified resourcefulness in its set design. The series cleverly utilized the same physical set for both the exterior and interior scenes of the barracks. When the storyline necessitated a change in setting, segments of the walls were either swapped out or rearranged to suit the requirements of the scene. This ingenious approach to set management showcased the creativity and flexibility of the production team behind Hogan's Heroes. For the majority of viewers, these behind-the-scenes adjustments were imperceptible, highlighting the artistry involved in television production. The team's ability to seamlessly transition between scenes using the same set components contributed to the illusion of a fully realized world within the confines of Stalag 13. This not only allowed for efficient use of space and materials, but also maintained the continuity and immersive quality of the show, all while navigating the practical limitations of the era's television production. Mysterious Theme Lyrics The instrumental theme of Hogan's Heroes is immediately recognizable to many fans, catchy and memorable in its melody. However, a lesser-known fact about this iconic tune is that it actually has lyrics written by Bernard Fine, one of the show's creators. These lyrics were never incorporated into the series, leaving a fascinating layer of the show's history unexplored by its audience. The existence of these lyrics adds an intriguing element of mystique to the series. 
Fans who discover this tidbit may find themselves curious about the content of the lyrics and the additional depth they could have brought to the show. Knowing that there are words to accompany the familiar melody invites speculation on the themes or messages they might contain. This revelation might prompt fans to imagine how the inclusion of sung lyrics could have introduced a new dimension to the series, enriching the viewer's connection to Hogan's heroes and enhancing the overall experience of the show's musical identity. Now it's time to hear from you. Which of these facts did you find most surprising? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching the entire video on the Famous People channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more in-depth content. We appreciate your engagement and look forward to sharing more intriguing stories with you in our upcoming videos. Goodbye.